Hi, it's Thursday, August 19th, and I'm Mark Friedman, just an American citizen. Still the greatest country in the world. Hot, humid day out, but just where else would you want to live? And I, of course, we see the Colorado River going down to zero almost. As I say, I wish we could send some of our water over to our friends out in the West. It's just not good. they got to deal with that. I mean, climate change, but no water. Okay, no notes, no sense. You see what's what I'm talking about here, of course. Part six of Afghanistan. I've been dealing with this all the way through. This is about the presidents. People are having problems understanding. We have four presidents that failed, that failed in their job as president when it came to Afghanistan and, and mostly into our foreign policy. But let's get to some of the music first, our digital stream to listen to. I got some different stuff here just to have a good time. Over here, it's hard to see because I have people in the shrink wrap. Rare Earth, get ready. It was Luskin's sale of uh, 337. Uh, Motown wanted a white group that could do some psychedelic. So Rare Earth came. They took Get Ready from The Temptations and did a 21-minute song of it. I mean, they did a short AM version, but a 21-minute, everybody liked the 21-minute. It was pretty good. It was like, hey, and get ready, because here I come. I'd rather hear The Temptations. But it's not bad. It's interesting stuff, Motown trying to go psychedelic. Next to that, an album you probably never heard of, a group you never heard of, Ramatan. Interesting group. Uh, April Lawton, a female lead guitarist, like early 70s. You had Mitch Mitchell from Hendrix Experience playing drums with her. You had Mike Panera playing uh, uh, also lead and rhythm and, and, and uh, vocals. Interesting group. They didn't go anywhere. Broke up after the second album, but this is interesting. She was a pretty good Guitar player, you should listen to it. Ramatam, this is her first album. Don't waste your time at the second album. Over here, our feature album, Rainbow Rising. Rainbow is so great. I just love Rainbow. Straight up long hair metal music. Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple went through a couple lead, lead singers. The favorite, of course, was Ronnie James Dio. Here's Ronnie James Dio, and this is the album, Rainbow Rising, with Stargazer. <laughs> this whole album rocks. Ronnie James was such a Excellent, excellent lead singer, also with Black Sabbath and, of course, Dio. Get this music. Listen to it for the digital stream. It soothes the animal spirits. Okay, let's get back to Afghanistan. Everybody's jumping by now for good reason. But we have to look at the history of this. Everybody forgets history. I don't know why. This is only 21 years ago. We have to, 20 years ago, we have to look at history. Let's get into it quickly. We have four failing presidents in this. Four. We have to understand that. With lies from the military throughout the entire thing. Just like Vietnam in that sense. Let's go first. Uh, President George Bush. One of the worst presidents of all time. Forget Katrina. Forget the crash. The, uh, the housing crash. He took us into Afghanistan. They said they thought they had been locked up in some mountain range. He said the Northern Alliance, some warlord wanted to go in and get him. He got away. Went to Pakistan, we were stuck there for years. Then he decides he's going to invade Iraq. What a, really a horrible, horrible president. A horrible president. Seems like a good guy, but a horrible, horrible president. So we're stuck in there, just getting bigger and bigger. And then there was a time at the beginning when the Taliban wanted to negotiate. He said, no negotiations. This is Bush telling the Afghans, Afghanis, no negotiations. Well, that was really smart. We could have made deals then and maybe moved on. But no, we were going to build a nation. Let's go to President Obama. I mean, nobody did it really as badly as Bush, but Obama did a horrible job. He he talked, he came on, every, they're saying that we could win if we surge, and we bring in 100,000 troops, but he says we're going to bring them in, we're going to get them out on a date specific. So you're saying to the group that lives there, the Taliban, the Afghanis, don't worry, we're going to send them in, stay hidden, stay away, do some shooting if you want some guerrilla warfare, but... We're going to be getting our guys out. What do they say? 2014, uh, 2014, 2016, whatever it was. They're going to be out. And it's the surges up and down. That was real smart. President Obama was not the greatest in foreign policy. TPP was his strength and everything else was nothing. But, but Afghanistan was a, a total loser with him. It just, he just kept on perpetrating, perpetuating, I'm sorry, the lie. Then we get to Trump. Trump comes in and decides... 
that he wants to be pulled out of Afghanistan. So he calls up, who is it, the Pakistanis? He says, let this guy out of, the town, out of, the, out of jail. He's a guy who killed a lot of Americans. Nobody's talking about this. They, get, they let him out of jail. He's going to become the head of the Taliban. He calls him up, has a good talk. Yeah, I think we can work something out. Yeah, they want peace. You got pictures of Pompeo sitting there with the Taliban. And, you know, everybody's going to be peace. So we're going to be out by May. And what he did was he said, we're going to reduce the amount of people. I think it was like from 10,000 or whatever down to 2,500. And the deal was, we're not coming after you, Taliban. You don't come after us. And that's why we haven't anybody killed, because that's what we did. Now suddenly our whole mission has shifted from nation building to terrorism. Okay, but everybody forgets the reason nobody was dying was we weren't shooting at the Taliban, the Taliban weren't shooting at us. Now, I mean, so what did Trump do except get us moving and let out the head Taliban guy out of jail? Another great move. Now we go to F, 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 now we get to another F, Joe Biden. Took backbone to get out of Afghanistan. We had to get out of Afghanistan. It was horrible. We had to get out. Yet you sit there and you go, what am I missing? Hello? There's got to be a way to get out. You got to tell Americans, hey, we have to have something set up. So if you're going to get to get out of town, exit stage left, you have to have something set up for your diplomats and your Americans who are there. He didn't have it set up. He's so focused on getting out. Nobody focused on being ready. This should have been set up for months ahead of time. And if we were going to help the Afghans, we should have been starting to shovel them out earlier too. But the Americans should have had a number saying, hey, get out of town. And it's what they should have been when they saw the Taliban were coming in and starting to take control of the outer provinces. We had nothing like that. And then we know what we saw. And yeah, those who sit there and say, this isn't like, like uh, Vietnam and say to a lot of these senators, and Congress said, well, you weren't alive then to know. Well, let me tell you something. I was alive then, and it was strictly luck that my number wasn't called. That's all it was, was luck. This is Vietnam, and it's a horrible job by, by, by Joe Biden. The right decision, the absolutely most horrible way of taking that decision and putting it into effect. Four Fs, four Fs for American presidents. Horrible. Peace. And remember that when you hear all these people yelling and screaming on TV.